Dorkshelf.com, we are here with uh, the one, the only, the lovely Kate Vernon. How are you today? Thank you. I'm really good, thank you. Glad to be in Toronto. Weather's nice too. It, 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 not... <laughs> it's great. Uh, so Kate, you were on a, a little known sci-fi series that may or may not have been watched in the States uh, called Battlestar Galactica. Never heard of it. Never heard of no. It. I was on that? For a couple of episodes at least. I think you're right. I believe so. I think you're right. Okay. Um, so tell us a bit about the process and how you ended up on that on that show. Um, I auditioned for it. <laughs> I auditioned for it. Went back to the cottage. I was visiting my family here in Toronto. Agent from Vancouver called, said you need to put yourself on tape for this show called Battlestar Galactica, and I'm like, okay, and I did, and put myself on tape, sent it off to Vancouver, drove up to the cottage in Muskoka, and a couple days later, I got a call late at night saying, you got it, and they need you, and I'm like, who, what, where, and I was so, I'd done it, and I walked away from it, that I was so stunned to actually get the offer, um, and then as I, as I arrived on the set and realized sort of what I'd been given, um, it became such an incredible experience. I mean, Eddie, I didn't realize Eddie was involved or that he was directing my episode. I didn't know Mary was in the show. I just quickly auditioned for something that seemed really interesting, but then I let it go. So I was pleasantly surprised. And rightly so. Your character in particular has, I think, by far the most underrated growth process because you, you leave for a while. Not to spoil anything because the series is out there, but you leave and you come back in a very big way. When you're... I'm talking to Kate Vernon. <laughs> but when you were uh, getting the scripts, did, did they sort of prepare you? Did they take you off to the side and say, hey, you know, we've got some news? No. No, there was no, no preparation. None of us knew when we were going to get chopped or thrown out of the air shaft or whatever they call it or, or, poisoned, or by poisoned by your husband. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I got a phone call from Ron and David saying, you know, really nice things to me and then we're sorry but you're going to die in the third episode. I was just devastated. So then obviously you, you leave the show for a bit, you go and do some other work. You come back, and they. Well, how does that process? Do they call you up and say, "Hey, by the way, welcome back," or is it like? Well, it, that was an interesting ride because when Ellen died, I didn't feel ready to leave the show. <laughs> I didn't, and 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 you know, and I knew my fans. It wasn't even that. It was just like I love the character so much. I love the show so much, and I just called Ron every few weeks, bugging him, saying, "Hi, Ron. It's Katie. I just wanted to know if." there was anything out there for me, you know, in the show, write me in a fantasy sequence or something, and he did, and he kept bringing me back. And then this one time I picked up the phone and called him, and he said, stop, I've pitched an idea to the network, it features your character heavily, and I'll let you know in a week. And then the rest is history. And a week went by, and I got a call, and he said, you're coming back to work. And... I, I was surprised, but then he tells me I was the you-know-what, and I was like, now you're messing with me. I am not you-know-me, <laughs> and it turned out that that was true. And it was most, I, I think one of the most jaw-dropping moments of the series was like, no way one of those has happened. Again, we're spoiling a whole bunch here if you haven't seen this. <laughs> How do we not... <laughs> Who doesn't know yeah. <laughs> at this point? The polar bear on Lost was there for an experiment, and you're the fifth. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell us, it's, you've been uh, you've been in acting for for a little while. Is there any advice you could give out to young actors, young actresses trying to break into the industry, trying to just you know make their way out in the industry? My my advice is is just be true to yourself and um, speak the truth when you act. Um, and commit and, and find your passion and find your joy. It's a really, it's a tough ride for sure. And um, just remember what you fell in love with at the beginning because you're going to get brainwashed along the way and forget 
<laughs> and you will hate it. You will love hate it. Just remember the joy that you fell in love with at first, and that will carry you. And uh, who's your, what's your sort of dream project? What are you sort of aching to do? What's the uh, who are you, who are you dying to work with? Liam Neeson. Um, there's a lot of people out there. I would love to, you know, be in front of Meryl Streep. I want to see what that's like. I want to feel what that's like. Um, she just seems so lovely. Um, uh, dream project. Uh, oh, I'd also love to work with Jim Carrey. I think that would be amazing. I'd love, love Jim Carrey. Um, I have lots of dream projects. I mean, I'd love to do romantic comedy. I'd love to do um, a wonderful drama. Thank you. Um, I'm easy. I just, it's like if it's well written and, if, and it's a good role and there's great actors around, then, you know, then it's fun. Then it's Excellent. a beautiful playground. Excellent. Uh, do you have a presence online? Are you on the Twitter or do you have a website? Do you, are, you, are you getting into that venture? My or? assistant just signed me up for Twitter and I said, get me off Twitter. I'm not a Twitter chick. I love everyone else on Twitter, but I can't handle Twitter. Twitter makes my hair go like this. So I'm not on Twitter, but I have my assistant just launched a website. So katevernon.com. Please go check it out. Um, it's brand, brand new as of today. Excellent. Literally. And I have um, Facebook fan sites and things like that. So. And lastly, we are dorkshelf.com. So we ask everybody, what is on your dork shelf? What is it that you show off to your friends during the big tour that's, that's sort of your prized possession? If there were a fire to happen, it would be the first thing you grab outside of your pets and family, of course. It's, um... <laughs> I guess it's the picture of my dog, Bodine. Um, he was he was a uh, German Shepherd, Saint Ber no I'm sorry he was a Golden Retriever Saint Bernard, massive golden beautiful dog, and he was with me for about 12 or 13 years. He was a big boy, and his dharma in life was to make everybody smile. And I have his ashes, I have his collar, I have photos of him, and that's the dork shelf. Other than my daughter, but I mean she'd be really mad at me for. <laughs> If you left her, it was like, no, stay. <laughs> no. You get your own thing. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Kate. It was a pleasure meeting you again. It was a pleasure. Take care. Peace.